Worlds is this week, and we will be covering the event live from Antwerp, Belgium. I am Kensley, and I am the host of Neutral Deductions, and I'm here with Lauren from the Gymternet. I will be heading to Belgium on Monday, September 25th, and I will be there through most of finals. I will be covering the last day remote from Vienna because I will be giving a week-long masterclass at a university in Vienna, and I really didn't want to hop on a plane at the last minute and risk it being canceled. So, Lauren, are you going to Worlds? Are you covering it? How can people find you? Yeah, so meanwhile, I will be at an audition all day Saturday, so I'll be covering Mag from Home at 4 a.m. New York time. And then as soon as my audition ends, I head to JFK, and I fly to Amsterdam, and then I (laughs) go to Belgium. Uh, I should get there Sunday morning in time for some qualifications, and then I'm there till Tuesday, and then I fly home. So I cannot wait. I'm going to pass away. So what I'm hearing is you're going to be absolutely exhausted. Yeah. And I feel like for the Sunday and Monday qualifications, it's, I'm just going to be delirious and just, yeah. It'll be great. A mess. But I'm, I can't. Yeah. I, I'm just so afraid about like not having videos. And last year it was like, oh yeah, you can cover like uh, remotely or whatever. And so I did. And I was like, I'll go to Spain. I'll have a vacation and I'll, you know, enjoy myself and then also cover. And then it was like, just kidding. There's nothing. And so I'm so afraid with Olympic qualifications that that's going to be the situation again. So I was like, I should go just for. Yeah, I totally get it. And (laughs) for those of you who don't know, this World Championships is going to be the final time that teams can qualify to the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. And Lauren put out this amazing article today. We're recording on Friday, September 22nd with diagrams and charts and everything and breaking down how do you qualify for the Olympics. But we're also going to break it down for you here. So who's already qualified to Paris for the men? It's China, Japan, and Great Britain. But Lauren, how can other teams get to Paris? So basically, um, it's the top nine teams that haven't yet qualified based on qualification um, rankings in Antwerp. Um, Pretty much that just means anyone in the top 12, because the three that qualified already are going to be in the top 12. And so the other nine teams that finish in the top 12 team, the top 12 rankings here will. Yeah, and it's super exciting, uh, right? Because we have these two teams that have never qualified before Turkey and Kazakhstan, and they have legitimate shots of making it to the Olympic Games. Yeah, I think, I mean, Turkey, I've been such a huge fan of for years now. And I really thought 2020, I was like, they can do it, even though they didn't have like a full team, even bare, I mean, barely. Um, what was that one week meet where Ibrahim um, Cholak did like a floor routine after not doing floor for like five oh, years yeah. or something? And he just like busted mm-hmm. out a floor routine because like it, their team spot was on the line. And it was just kind of like stuff like that was happening. And it was so like magical. And they got so close and they basically qualified a full team, like with the number of individuals that they had. So it was just like, oh, they're so close. Like it's got to happen next time. And I feel like there's no way, like not I know. <laughs> everything I have, but there's no way <laughs> unless like drastic tragedy. And now that they have um, Emre. Did um, Yeah. I feel like he's just going to elevate them even more because they don't have Ibrahim right. this year. Um and they do have a couple of all-arounders like um, Karim Shinner and um, Mehmet um, Ko- uh, oh my God, Kosak, yeah. Yeah. Kosak is his name. Yeah. Um, and so I think like they're strong, but they're not like 83 plus like Adem Asil and Ahmet Ondra are. So it's kind of like having another all-arounder who can like elevate them as a team is really important and step in anywhere. And yeah. And he had really good like individual event results in at national. Yeah, he too, plays second so. at Turkish nationals. Yeah. So that's really, really exciting. Yeah. So yeah. if Turkey didn't qualify a team, which knock on wood, we are hoping that they do, how can all arounders or event specialists qualify to the Paris Olympics through this world championships? Um, so they have three, I just opened my doc just in case I mess up, but basically they have, I'm going to go to my chart because that's where it's like super simple. Um, there's three ways for them to qualify, which is if their team finishes 13th to 15th, their nation gets a spot. So then the nation decides, the NOC decides like, we want to give it to this person, which can happen next year, but like, they'll be guaranteed a spot for an individual. Um, they can pick an all around or a specialist, whatever it's up to them. Um, the all around path to the Olympics for MAG, it's top eight um, from what they call eligible athletes, which just means um, athletes that 
are not part of teams that have qualified and um, that are not part of that, or they can be part of that criteria that allows them to have two all-arounders basically. So um, if their team finishes 13th to 15th and qualifies a non-nominative spot, they can also qualify a nominative all-around spot. So um, yeah, but then the all-around spots are limited to one per country. So <laughs> nominative all-around one per country, not nominative nominative one per country. I'm not going to say that <laughs> word ever again. Um, yeah. So that's for basically um, the first two kind of paths to the Olympics. And then uh, final is the apparatus qualifiers, which um, basically it's, they go to event finals first and they pick whoever on each event who is an eligible athlete um, again, hasn't previously qualified as an all arounder because that happens first or as a, a part of a team. Um, whoever's left over and is in those finals, the top on each one um, can qualify a spot and they can compete all events if they want to. I think most MAG are specialists in these situations, so it's not going to be like a huge deal. Sorry, my work computer is like, hello. Um, but yeah, so I think it's kind of like um, for MAG, it'll work out that most will be specialists. But basically, um, if they can't fill all in the event finals, like if no one qualified to the event final that's eligible, then they go back into the qualification rankings and they go down to like whatever the case may be, whatever number. Um, when I did like a little simulation using last year's results from Worlds, everyone came from event finals for MAG except for parallel bars, which is very heavily dominated by all arounders and by China and by other countries that will qualified team or already have. And so we went into qualifications based on last year's results, but even there, um, the athlete who would have qualified based on last year's results was like 14th or something. So it's not like they're digging like down to like 50th, which is what's going to happen, <laughs> flag, I think. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's, different that's really, really interesting. And you're right. Parallel bars, oftentimes it is an event final that's filled with athletes from very, very strong team countries. But I could honestly see that mm -hmm. potentially happening on like floor exercise, right? So if Carlos Yulo or Artem Dolgopiat yeah. from Israel have poor performances and qualifications, like it very clearly floor mm -hmm. could be an all sort of top team athletes present competing there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think floor, floor lends itself to all arounders really well. High bar for a lot of it is also a lot of all arounders. There's a couple standouts, but I think it's also very heavily dominated by all arounders. And then you have like hobbles <laughs> and rings, which are going to be like such a bloodbath and I hate it because I love every single athlete on those events, the top guys. And it's just kind of like, Oh, and then vault is like, I don't even want to talk about vault because it's going to be <laughs> dramatic and terrifying. I'm sure. But like there are like, you know, there, I think vault is a good mix of like all arounders and, um, yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I do miss that in the 2019 qualification leading up to the Tokyo Olympics that they allowed I think it was three athletes to qualify through event three, finals. Yeah. And I actually oh, prefer three, that yeah. because I yeah. think that there's so much that can happen. And like, what if an athlete gets injured and can't compete in the world cup series, but they were yeah. only, you know, a 10th or a thousandth of a point off earning that spot from the world championships. Like, well, they obviously should be there. And I think back to, um, you know, when Christian Berkey in 2015 didn't make the final and then didn't earn an opportunity to compete in the Rio Olympics. And he was very clearly one of the best pommel horse workers in the world at that time and should have been able to earn a spot. So, yeah, it's so flawed and it's so like, you really have to peak at the most specific point of this year or the most specific point of next year. And it's like, how do you even train to know like, okay, well, I have to peak at this point to make worlds. And then I have to peak at this point to make the Olympics. And then if I don't make the Olympics, I have to peak again, like at this point. And so it's so hard. And I feel like specialists, I mean, I'm glad that they opened like a way for specialists to get in because I feel like it was so hard in the past when they really only had the one chance. Um, but now it's just kind of like the planning and the management of that situation for specialists to qualify is just so intense. And especially for these super competitive events where it's going to be, you know, Pommels has like four small program specialists that could all do it, I think. And it's just kind of like, oh my God, like 
some of them are not going to make it and there are some of the best in the world and it's just going to be yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, let's sort of <laughs> switch gears here for a second and talk about maybe what's going to happen in the team final, who's definitely making the team final, who's sort of on the edge and things like that. So for me, I think you're definitely getting into team final if your team is at 250 or above, like guaranteed into team final. Yeah. Um, so for me, there's really six teams that I would say, unless something disastrous happens, like they're making team final mm -hmm. and that's China, Japan, Great Britain, USA, Ukraine, and Italy. But for those last two spots, it is going to be really tough. And it's honestly going to come down to who hits on the day because their difficulty level is not so different. It's not like they're China and they can fall 10 times and like still win a medal. Um, so who do you think are some yeah. of those teams that are on the border of making it into team finals? Um, I really, I mean, I know I'm a Turkey girl, but like Turkey, I feel like for sure is my favorite. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think Turkey, I think especially like with Emery yeah. Dodonley, like I think that they are going to make team finals and earn that Olympic berth. I just have this like gut yeah. feeling that they're going to do it. Yeah, I think my other big ones are probably, I mean, Spain, I'm really excited about um, with uh, Joel Plata back now after the car accident and his injuries. And like, I, he hasn't been doing all six events, but he's been looking good on what he's been doing. And so I'm like, really excited that he's just able to make it after like going through that whole situation. Um, just getting yeah. back to where and he's for now. those of you who don't know, um, and Joel Plata was in a horrific car accident earlier this year, broke multiple bones in his leg. And the fact that he is back doing gymnastics within like six months at a competitive level is yeah. truly miraculous. Yeah. Because it was like mm -hmm. right before Euros, shortly before Euros, and the whole team was in the car and it was just kind of like devastating. But he was the one that right. had like the mm -hmm. brunt of the impact. And so, yeah, it was devastating, but he's made it to you know such a strong level again and even if he's not on all six events because he was looking at his best ever i think leading up to that he was like right. doing huge things and i think um that's why it was so i mean it's devastating for anyone to be in that situation but to see him at like the peak of his career just to have to take such a big step back um yeah i think but i think spain in general like they they announced their team today it's such a strong team overall and he's on it so um yeah i'm really hopeful for Spain. I am too. You know, final. they made the team final last year. I would say Ray Zapata has not been looking as strong on floor overall this year, mm. right? He's an Olympic medalist on floor, but something right now is just not clicking. And so I don't really anticipate that he's going to be making the floor final at, as an individual this year. Yeah. Um, how about you? So Switzerland teams? is looking incredible right now and um noah seifert he yeah. his all-around scores have been getting up close to like 85 like that big big number so i'm betting that they're going to be in the race for making team finals as well as potentially south korea and kazakhstan i think kazakhstan's a little bit of an outside yeah. chance but they had a really really good showing at um Asian championships earlier this year. Uh, yeah, they're a bubble team for sure. And Switzerland, they, so they had an injury to their overall team captain, not even just the world's team captain, but overall team captain. Um, and so they're being, they had a replacement come in, which is Langenegger. Florian um, mm -hmm. Langenegger. And he, he actually should have been I on the team, so honestly. <laughs> like he looked great at trials, at all of them and at everything leading up to trials and every meet this year. And so it was kind of shocking to see that he didn't make the team. Um, so I'm not thrilled about the injury because obviously they lost a huge talent. But like also I think having an alternate that's semi at the same level is incredible depth. And I think that Switzerland, that's why they're such a big um, – presence. Yeah, I think so team. too. So yeah. I, I would say there's like a next tier of countries. So those who are on the border of making Paris, and there are some really exciting storylines and some sort of tragic storylines going on. So for me, the exciting storyline yeah. is Belgium. They have been working so hard. Yeah. They're sending a pretty strong team. I'm really looking forward to seeing Noah Quavita on um, on high bar, I think he scored up to even like 14-7 this year. So look for him. Um, I yeah. did an interview. And he upgraded, I think, 
like triple back tucked yeah. to a triple back pike, like yes. just at the recent trial. And so I'm like, I know. Whoa. I did an it's interview exciting. with him last year at the European Championships. And I asked him if there was like a nickname. And he said, yeah, they call him like airline Quavita or like, like because he like flies so high or something <laughs> like that, which I thought was really funny. Um, and then they had, um, a gymnast earlier this year who got silver on pommel horse at the European Championships, Maxine Hintes. Oh, yeah. um, so they're definitely yeah. upcoming. And I think that they're one to watch for that bubble spot of Paris as a team. So do you have any, uh, all yeah. of your back databases, like when is the last time Belgium even made it as a team to the Olympics? Never. <laughs> like even sending an individual is very recent. Like I looked at that today and it was like, they, they have only sent athletes, I think to like the last, or it was like four Olympics within like the last 50 years or something. Like it's not a lot. They were doing the Olympics back in like 1904. And then they just like dropped off the face of the earth and then they came back, but like they haven't, they hadn't sent individuals for a while. So never qualified a team. It'll be huge if they do. So I'm a little nervous about Germany. They, yeah. Lucas Dalzer has been injured. He hurt his shoulder last year at a meet in December. Um, he's dropped out of a couple meets this year. He's also been phenomenal sometimes. I believe he scored even as high as 15.3 on parallel bars. And, you know, he is the Olympic and world silver medalist on parallel bars. But if you sort of look at the team, like that's kind of the only event he really fits in. And there are other... Yeah. Their other events are like, they're fine. They're not really bad anywhere. But yeah. if they don't hit well, like they are going to not make it to Paris. And I think it would be like the yeah. first time ever if that happened. Ever. Yeah. So for me, I think Germany is so hit or miss. Like, I think they can go to a qualifications and knock it out of the park. And then they go into a team final and they have, I think there's one meet that I was watching where like every floor routine had multiple falls and I was just like what is happening like how did you make the team final and then it's like oh because you can yeah. compete the qualifications. <laughs> it's just not in final but like, that's my one holdout for them is like they can put a meet together that's really solid and like they have the talent to get through and Lucas Dowser actually um I think it was yeah it was just Paris Challenge Cup he did pommels and high bar and looked great on both and so it was like he has it in him to contribute so much to this team and I think I think they have the potential to still make it to the Olympics, but it's like, will they have a qualifications day or will they have a team finals day in qualifications? And so it's like, that's just really what we have to be looking at is like, can they hit? And so, which is, I mean, you can say that for literally any team you have to hit, but like for Germany, especially being so on the edge, it's like, no, you really have to hit. Well, and remember back in done. 2019 in Stuttgart at their home world championships, like they had a terrible qualifications yeah. and they were yeah. sitting in the stands until the last rotation, sort of like biting their nails being like, oh my gosh, our, yeah. oh, they, mm -hmm, they, they got the very they? last spot and it yeah, was, it was really great. nail biting. Mm -hmm. So like, I agree with you. I think yeah. Germany can do very well but they're not consistent enough for me to be completely certain that they're going to make it to paris and so yeah, i think oh, that yeah. would be sort of a big eye-opener or scandal because they germany is the team that has been there like forever so yeah. um brazil is another team for me that is just sort of riddled with injuries and they've got a couple standout gymnasts on a couple of, of events but as a team i'm not sure that they're going to be able to put together a performance yeah so i think they're really only missing Sosa this year. And I, so they were replacing him basically with Tomas Rodriguez. And I think based on nationals, he looked great. Like he had one, one routine, I think it was maybe high bar where he completely bombed it and got like a nine or something similar to that, where it was like, what are you doing? But like overall, he, he's such a strong all arounder and he's well balanced. He doesn't have the scores that can replace Sosa's scores. So that's where they're going to miss right. out on like, tenths or even points when you look at like vault and um, p bars and yeah <laughs> everything except pommels really but like um, yeah so i think yeah. like they do have a good replacement in him and they do like um diogo suarez has like built on his pommels ability like he got a 14 in paris which right. was just like unheard of and so i think there are places where they're adding and you know mariano looks great and they have a lot of talent but like it's really just about replacing Sosa's scores and whether they're going to be able to do that or whether if they do have a really good day, if those replacement scores are going to be enough to carry them. Yeah, I basically. think I completely agree with you. And 
you know, for me, there's there's one more team that I am a little bit worried about, and that's France, because they're trying to qualify for their home Olympic Games, but they didn't qualify a team to Tokyo, and I'm not sure that their scores this year are are going to be enough. Like, I think that they'll probably fall in that sort of 13 to 15 range, but I'm not sure that they'll crack yeah. top 12. Are you worried about them at all? Yeah, and that's about what they did last year. I think last year they were mm-hmm. around 13 to 15. And so, and I think their team, I can't decide if their team is weaker or stronger this year. They're one where they're like, they have so many newer guys and none of like, because they're not sending Samira Saeed and they're not sending Cyril Thomas Stone. So they're not sending like their specialists. They're sending all arounders, but their all arounders don't have huge scores. They're like 77, Except for Oscar. Guys, so it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Benjamin in Leo Saladino, I think also um, is, I mean, he's got a few events that are kind of hit or miss, but he's also really strong and really powerful. And I think it's I just know. such a young team, I think, just off the top of my head. And I think, like, I don't know, I, I'm afraid <laughs> for them. <laughs> but I um, also just kind of like, I don't know, I just don't think it's, it's going to happen because also of the depth of the other teams that are coming in. Like, I think even if they have a good day, it's just kind of like, do you have this enough standout routine? Because obviously Osberger on floor is outstanding and can make the floor final. And if they don't qualify, could get the Olympic spot. So it's kind of like, will that happen? Or <laughs> will, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> they have the talent, but it's just not, maybe not enough like pockets of it in different places. Yeah. Yeah. So let's sort of like break everything down that we just talked about, like the three big storylines to watch. So are Turkey and Kazakhstan going to qualify a team to the Olympics for the first time? And I think this is especially, it would be really insane if Kazakhstan actually pulls this off because they've only ever had two athletes ever qualify to the Olympics that I could find. And that was Stepan Gorbachev in 2012. And your absolute favorite athlete, Milad Karimi, <laughs> qualified to Tokyo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we didn't get in depth with this, but th- I think the race for the bronze medal is going to be so close and so exciting. And it is the thing I am yeah. most excited for at this world championships. Yeah, I agree. And it's so funny because I've been thinking about the Olympics, Olympics, Olympics. So it's like, and with, you know, like China's not sending like an A plus team, like Zhang Boang isn't going to be there. And so it's kind of like, well, you know, they're still an amazing team and it's kind of like the fact that they can send a mostly a beat that's just going to like be out of this world and a top contender for gold basically is just out of I yeah, was out of the shocked world, the but. fact that they could send Jung Bo Hung and Zhou Jing Yuan and still come up with the top score like when we ran all of the numbers from this year like they still have the highest potential of any team it's insane. They're just so like they're deep in a way. Japan's also deep, but I feel like Japan has so much depth with like specialists more so than like guys who can do everything or who have multiple areas yeah. of expertise. And so it's like China's depth in that sense. Like I feel like Japan has more athletes that could be sent to worlds based on one event. Um, when I was <laughs> um, looking at your database, the Chinese athlete or the Japanese athletes had four of the top 10 all around scores this year, which to have that kind of all yeah. around depth in one country is, is huge, but it also means that really good athletes are being left off of the team. So yeah. when it comes to the bronze medal, so we, we think that Japan and China are going to be fighting it out for gold unless something crazy happens, but bronze, I mean, we've USA, Great Britain, Ukraine, um, maybe Italy in the mix there too. Like who do you think is going to come out on top? Yeah. So back in March, watching the meet in Germany, um, where the USA just like did everything they've ever should have done in a meet before. That was one of the most exciting, like USA meet, USA mag (laughs) meets that I've ever seen. And I was just like, oh my God, like they can do it. Like they're showing here how good they are. And then they sent a team, a weaker team to Pan Am's and that team outscored the Germany team, which had like all of like the top scars, uh, top stars. The Pan Am's team outscored the Germany team on high bar, which was just like, hello, like high bar is like looking amazing right now for the USA. And so it's not going to be like quite the same. There's no Brody, obviously. And so it's kind of like they're going to take a little bit of a hit on high bar, I think, especially because there are consistency issues for some of the guys. But I do think it's the 
the team that I wanted based on who was available and ready. Um, I talked to you a lot about this in the past, but I was mm-hmm. not pro Netaroshik last year because it's so hard. I'm, I talked about this with WAG this week. It's like, I want a built-in alternate for all of my teams. And I feel like when you put a one or two event specialist, especially on a MAG team with six events, like it's so hard to come back from like an injury or something going wrong. And it's like, if you don't have a built-in alternate, it's it's impossible to stay in the mix. And I think this year's team is more yeah. along the lines of what I personally would do. And so I wasn't, I, I know what he can add to the team. I know what Kern Phillips can add to the team. And I'm just like, great but like i also want my built-in alternate and so i think i'm really happy with how things worked out and i hope that having that sort of structure which is similar to how wag has been doing it over the past few years i I think that's going to be really important for them and i really think that it's going to lend itself to the u.s having a really good um performance yeah um, Yeah. it's interesting because last year the u.s had quite a big d score bump on Great Britain, it was well Mm. over a point, but they didn't capitalize on that in the team final. And this year their D scores are actually within like a 10th of each other, but the execution scores for the US have gone up and Great Britain is still missing a couple couple of their top guys like Joe Fraser and Gianni Regini Moran. And, but I, I think the US is gonna do it this year. They, they seem poised. They seemed ready. Like you yeah. said, there's not this one event athlete, um, which in some ways I agree with you. I think it makes it hard to take an athlete that's not an all arounder unless they have the consistency of like a Max Whitlock on p- Pommel Horse or a Zoji yeah. Nguyen. Not even an all arounder with four events or three events even but like because there are a few teams that are doing that they're putting up guys like Courtney Tollock I mean he can do more than rings and vault but like that's what he's there for but he can also fill in on the side like he's done floor and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and so I think like just having someone that can fill in when you're taking someone with one event it's like if they fall in the team final and you were betting on a 15 and they get a 12 it's like well there's three points knocked off of one routine which is hard to come back from. And so I think having this year where they're not banking on 15.5s and they're banking on just hitting consistent routines that are maybe going to come in a little lower, but maybe hit, it's kind of like, it's a different risk, but it's, um, I think when it's going to be I think so too. Them. So let's talk a little bit about Great Britain's yeah. team. So they have Jake Jarman, who has been performing very well this year. And he is sort of known as a vault and floor specialist. He just got a new skill named for after himself at the Paris World Cup, which is an insane three and a half twisting double layout. Like I, and he stick, he landed so well. Um, yeah. There's of course individual success, I think for many of the athletes possible. So there's right, Max Whitlock on pommel horse, reigning Olympic, cha- well, double reigning Olympic champion on pommel horse. Um, Courtney Tullock, who ha- got a bronze on silver rings last year who also can put together a very strong vault and parallel bar rotation and then they have some new faces right harry hepworth is one of these so where do you see him fitting in with a team um so i see him mostly he's like floor vault kind of and rings so i think like that's and rings yes um so i think he's gonna he's good in the sense that like he has strengths on certain events where he can help propel the team, but it's not just like I was saying before one event. So it's kind of, it'll be helpful that he can add multiple scores to the team. Um, Maybe I feel like he's kind of in the mix of what I like. He's a consistent guy. He can hit like well enough to be considered like not an all arounder, I guess, but like versatile maybe, but then he's also got standouts. And so it's kind of like right in the middle of what I want is like someone who can do both. And so, um, yeah, so I'm excited to see how he. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see sort of which strategy pays off because like you said, the U S is taking all, all arounders and great Britain is taking really two all arounders. I mean, uh, Courtney can do all around, but he's not really an all around yeah. the right <laughs> and then you've got max who can do three or four events and harry that does three or four events and so yeah. i'm very interested to, to see how that goes and then we have you well it's funny because like max is like i'm gonna he's doing a six nine on pommels right now which is the highest international um 
D score that's been awarded so far this year. And he's going to get like a 15 plus on pommels. And then high bar, he's hitting more of like a 12, five or a 12, eight. So it's like, they kind of balance out. Like he'll get a solid, like 13, five or 14, <laughs> like combined. So it's like average. Yeah, sure. It's, it yeah. works. So I'm fine. With that. Um, yeah. And then you sort of have this dark horse in Ukraine, right? Like, they, yeah. the return was, okay. So like, if you look at scores of Ukraine earlier this year, you're like, oh boy, they're in big trouble. And big then all of a sudden, yeah. Oleg Vernayev gets his sentence reduced and he's able to start come back competing and he immediately starts putting up huge scores. And I think his high bar mm -hmm. is a little bit unknown. We think he's going to be competing on high bar as well, which should replace one of the lower scores. Um, but yeah. I... If Great Britain and USA do not show up, like Ukraine is right there within like a point of Great Britain. Yeah, and they have um, Chaperny back, which he did. He, he didn't mm -hmm. compete at Worlds last year. He's been out for a while. I, you know, I don't remember if he competed at Worlds. I don't remember either. I feel like he didn't, but like if he did, it wasn't like what we should be seeing from him. It was a step back. And so, um, yeah. while you look that up, I'm going to talk about how his vault looks right now, which is ridiculous. Like he has the highest block out of anyone I've seen. He could literally do <laughs> handspring triple front, no problem taking after Radivilov. So um, I feel like he just looks so good. And like, he's had some stumbles in recent meets. Like he hasn't done um, his best on floor. He hasn't done his, he's done okay on P-bars actually, but like, I feel like there was a meet on floor that he hit and got like a solid score. And then another where he kind of didn't. And so um, it's, it's just exciting to have him um, at a higher level. If yeah, he, yeah. I completely agree. I'm, I'm really excited for this yeah. Ukrainian team. And then, you know, Italy, yeah. <laughs> when Italy named their team, Lauren and I were actually texting back and forth. And Lauren was like, I guess they just hate pommel horse and they're just going to hope that everyone else <laughs> dies there too. Yeah. Which, I mean, they're fine. They're not like, they're not off. Like they have Abedini. So like they'll get his score. That'll be a good score. Um, I feel like, Levantisi can hit decently on pommel horse if I'm thinking of his routine. Um, Kasali, it's also like not great, but a 13 plus. And so like, it's just devastating that that was the event that didn't cost them it, a medal, but it did. Like, I don't want to blame it on any one routine, but they were ahead of Great Britain. And yeah. so it was just kind of like, that was where they lost it. And so, and after leading for like, the majority of the competition and so i think that's why i'm so focused on pommels for them and they do have a couple guys where it's like oh he could have been so good and they also left carlo Macchini home and so it's yeah. just they're losing a big high bar score and so i like that they're focusing on all-rounders again because that's the kind of person that i am but then there are some key routines that i'm just like oh i wish that this person could do more and be like the dadio like, you know, there's, they yeah. have a couple really standout athletes that just aren't competing. So, um, okay. Yeah. So the third storyline that I think that really people should be paying attention to is will Hashimoto be the first athlete since Uchimura Kohei to repeat as world champion? And I think this is a, I would say mm. he is the favorite, but he has been dealing with a lot of injuries this year. I cannot believe how much he has competed, even though he did not need to. And then he did end up having that really poor performance yeah. at the university games and had a concussion after a fall on pommel mm. horse. And so it'll be interesting to see, like, is he going to come back and be normal Hashimoto and is he going to win by three points? Or is he going to have multiple right. falls on floor and, and struggle through the competition and open the door for someone else? And he doesn't have Jen Bohang there to push him because they need each other. I feel like it's so unfair that China's know, doing this to us. But it's like, I feel like they were so funny at university games because like, all their interviews were about each other and how like they love each other and how they love to see each other succeed and they push each other. And so I think like it's such a bummer that we don't get to witness that rivalry for the third year in a row because it's it's such a good one and it's such like... I feel I mean, like they do need each other. And it was to Jung Bohung's year too. Like he won in 20, yeah. or, you know, like Hashimoto it's took different. the Olympics. <laughs> Jung took worlds the same year. Uh, then Hashimoto took worlds last year. So it was like, and Jung yeah. has looked amazing this year. So I was like, it's his year. <laughs> but it, yeah, his trial score, he got like an 89 or something like that at the most recent trial before I think so, Asian yeah. Games, I think. And so, like, yeah, so it would have been. 
and those two had been leading the all around standings for the year anyway. So it was just kind of like, it would have been so nice, but China had to go and break our hearts. But yeah, I do. I think Hashimoto, um, I think I'm mostly just worried about how he'll come in after what happened um, at university games, because that was really kind of like a shake up kind of situation. And I think, I don't know, he did compete recently at, what they were calling like the super specialist championships where they just had like eight specialists to compete um, on each event. And it was like funny, but um, yeah, so it was, he did well there. I think from what I can remember, like he had high bar and um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm optimistic about him. I don't know if we'll see him at the way we're used to seeing him where he's just all out and yeah, but it's also so hard to challenge him because no one else is hitting like an 88. He can hit an 85 on a bad day. So it's kind of like, yeah. So it's like, who, even if he's not doing everything at a hundred percent, like who yeah, else So can? let's talk about some of those other people who could challenge him. Should he have several falls in the all around? So yeah. for me, I think it's several of his own teammates. And I think Japan is going to have a yeah. really hard time deciding who gets to do all around in qualifications and have that option, right? Because they have Minami Kazuki, who's going to be doing floor and vault, who very clearly has the opportunity to be world champion on those events. So that means one of their four other all arounders is not going to have the opportunity to compete at the world championships because they use a four up three count lineup option during qualifications. So as I talked about at the start of the program was, According to Lauren's data, Chiba Kenta, Miwa Tepe, and Kaya Kazuma all have four of the top 10 all-around scores in the world this year. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's it, They're such a strong all-around depth team right now at the top. And I think if you look at like the top 50 all-around scores through the year, Japan has like 30 of them or 25. But it's like, it's ridiculous. And so so the fact that they have not only that total depth, but that high level depth, because most countries do not have that. I mean, like comparing it to US WAG, where it's like Simone Biles getting a 59 and then 56, 57, maybe for the rest of them. So it, it really is like Japan has the athletes that are going to be the only athletes to challenge Hashimoto, basically. So, I, yeah. I think there and are China a couple too, of the Chinese yeah. athletes. I think Shi Kong maybe has one of the top three scores this year as well. Yeah. Um, but for me, okay, so I am obsessed with Sun Wei, like his cheekbones, his personality, everything. Like I just yeah. love him and I love his gymnastics. And yeah. at the most recent Chinese trial, he went 85 plus. And I am so excited yeah. to see what can happen. And my God, I need this to happen because he is the alley raceman of men's gymnastics. He has been fourth so many times and I like need him on that medal stand. Yeah, he he's definitely, I think, a fan favorite. And I think one that everyone kind of roots for. And I, yeah, I feel the same way where it's like, he's always the bridesmaid, never the bride kind of situation, which was exactly right, Ali's situation. For a while. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about him. Um, is China putting up other all arounders? Because I feel like most of the I think that su- I think that Chi Song and Sun Wei are going to be the only two oh, doing it yeah. in qualifications. Yeah, so Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um okay, yeah. So then outside of China and Japan, like who's on your list? I have a couple. I think no Either Ilya Kovtun or Carlos Yulo is at the top of that, but they both just seem to often implode at major events. Like they do so well at like their local, like European championships or Asian championships or like Doha World Cup or things like that. And then they get to Worlds and I think that they're just like exhausted. Well, Kofton did take a break this year, which is very promising. He didn't compete 50 times between, you know, Euros and Worlds, which I think is very good. And he came back at, um, in the all around, I think his maybe first in a while was at Hungarian championships um, over the weekend. And he had like an 83-9, which, you know, isn't going to tackle an 86, but you never know. He can, he has room to improve on that. And I think, 
yeah, so he he's definitely yeah. rested at least and not like ready to burn out like he is every yeah, other year. I, so. Well, I, it's just a thing of like, how is it going to hit on the day? But I do think that Carlos Yulo or Elio Kofton yeah. are probably the most likely to challenge for a spot on the podium. I think, you know, Ed Demisil has had yeah. a really promising year. He won the all around at the European Championships this year. Yeah. I think one of the Americans could be up there, but the Americans, like the Japanese, have this huge struggle where it's going to be like, who gets to do all around in qualifications? And the only yeah. person I'm like 99.9% .9 sure is not going to do all around is Paul Judah. Like the rest of them, okay. I think it's going to be hit or miss. Like Yule actually has the highest score of all of yeah. the Americans, but he was the lowest scoring of the other four, right? So you have got yeah. Asher Hong one, uh, then Ko Young, and then Fred Richard. So I, if I was to yeah. take a stab, I think what they'll do is Asher, Koi, Yule is is kind of where I think okay. that they'll go. But I it could honestly be any of the four of them, just depending on how they're hitting. Yeah. Okay, so one of the Americans, and then if Jake Jarman hits, I think he can also be up there as well. So those are so, sort of some of the outsiders, I think, may be rotating with that top group or having a, even a shot at the podium. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right on all of them. I, there's others that have like had a few high scores this year, but I don't see them as being like metal contenders necessarily. And like that's like right. Noe Seifert and um, even like Nestor Abad and like others like that who are like 84 guys on like their best possible day at a domestic meet. But like you know they'll be you know yeah. So ones to I think watch, Nestor got an 85 like, at that Swiss friendly, but um I had a friend who was watching it. Oh, and that meet was the scoring thing. in that yeah. meet was. Very generous. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm picturing a lot. A few of the um, Swiss trials were. Yeah. Really, uh, <laughs> Switzerland is just like we're winning everything. <laughs> no, I love sorry. that for them. <laughs> it's very funny. But I love okay, them. let's yeah. let's jump into like okay, what can we expect in event finals? So three of the six world championships. Yeah champions from last year are not here. Gianni Regini Moran won floor for Great Britain. Um, so Jingyi Wan won parallel bars for China. And then Brody Malone won high bar for the US. And so a mix of injuries or competing at other competitions that are happen happening simultaneously with the world championships. So let's start with floor. Like who, who do you see as favorites here? <laughs> so when I was taking notes for this, I wasn't really thinking about favorites. I was thinking about my favorites. Um, <laughs> Uh, so my list is like William A. Mard and Christopher Macharos. And so it's like, that's why I just want to see get into the final, but favorites for the final. I feel like, I feel like honestly, I mean, it's going to be a lot of China and Japan, but for floor, I'm really hoping we get like a plus Jake Jarman, because I'd love to see with all the work that he's done on that event. Um, I'd love to see him really high up there, um, in the final he's, I think he's had a six nine mm -hmm. D score. Yeah, that was at Paris Challenge Cup in qualifications. I think he got downgraded. He, he in, did, um, yeah, finals, for, but, uh, based on his yeah, last pass. Did, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's still got like a fourteen five for like a not great routine. So it's like I feel like he has it in him to do like a really really strong finish. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, all my favorites are like. I like a mix of like the Jake Jarmans and then like the Benjamin Osbergers where it's like, he's not doing the most difficult routine and he bare, I think he got into the mm -hmm. world final last year as the alternate, but like his gymnastics is so beautiful. He went in as alternate and finished in fourth and almost won a medal, like was very, very close. So I'm excited for him and I really want him. I don't think he'll win a medal unless there's mistakes. It's even making the final is going to be really hard, but like he's one that I really want to see. In the yeah, I think that final. you sort of characterized it perfectly as there are sort of two people who make it into floor final and it's the tricksters who yeah. don't always have the best form. And then there <laughs> are those who have like really beautiful gymnastics like Benjamin Osberger or Yul Moldauer. And it's just gorgeous to sit back yeah. and watch. Um, obviously, Minami Kazuki, if he hits, is yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. going to be up there. Artem Dolgopiat has been a little bit hit or miss this year, but of course, as Olympic champion and 
to, he does have one of the highest floor scores in the world this year. He certainly could be there challenging, but I do hope a couple of, couple of the cleaner gymnasts, like um, even Carlos yeah. Ulo, you know, make yeah. it and don't mess up their qualification. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so my favorite, who's kind of a mix of gorgeous gymnastics, you might know who I'm going to say, gorgeous gymnastics, great difficulty, <laughs> Milad Karimi, he's been yeah. on one this year, like he had a great university games, he's actually hitting, he's like, I feel like his problems on floor, he has nothing wrong with his form or technique, he's barely getting deducted for like big things, but like, he'll just randomly sit like a double front and it's like, cool and now you're done and you can't make the final and yeah but he's actually been hitting like pretty well yeah. this year i think and so i'm fingers crossed for high bar too but like for floor is where i'd really like to see him um get in because his gymnastics is gorgeous and he's just yeah um a great blend of the two sort of floor gymnasts that we see yeah, making, i agree usually. he has really come into his own not only on floor but on high bar as well so Sort yeah. of a double threat there. Um, okay, let's talk about Pummel yeah. Horse because I think Pummel Horse yeah. is going to be the most interesting fight. And I know a lot of people don't like Pummel Horse because it's hard to understand and it just looks like they're doing a bunch of circles. And I understand that mindset. They are. <laughs> it like took me a long time to sort of like understand oh, yeah. what was actually happening. But yeah. oh my gosh. So this, okay, this is the event where we typically have the most people from non like team countries, right? We're going to see things like Croatia and Ireland and Jordan and Taiwan and things like that. And there is one spot out of this final and there are no joke, like six to eight world-class Pomohor specialists that it just depends on how they hit that day. Who's going to the Olympics. Oh, the other thing about this is three of these athletes. So Narman Kurbanov from Kazakhstan, Ahmad Abu Al Sud from Jordan and Li Chi Kai from Taiwan are all competing at Asian Games. Then they are flying after finals from China to Belgium. I believe I'm correct in saying that they are missing podium training and like they are going to walk out on qualification and hope they make it into that final. Yeah, um, which is so funny because um, Miguel Bassana's dad messaged me and was like, he's not going to Worlds because he's going to Asian Games and they want to like keep him healthy and stuff. Meanwhile, he wasn't a threat for, I mean, he'll, he could win a medal at Asian Games. He's really strong, but wasn't a threat for a Worlds medal. Um, whereas like they're doing the opposite with Carlos where he's going to be at Worlds, um, even though that wasn't the plan originally. But like thinking about that where it's like, they're not putting that pressure on him, but they're putting so much pressure on guys that have like the most realistic chance of making, obviously it's different countries, but like, I'm just saying like the mindset of being like, go compete here for Asian Games glory and then immediately go and try to qualify for the Olympics for one spot that like, I don't know, it's the travel alone, six time zones between the two and the flight and no podium training. It's just, I mean, at least they're, only doing I know. one event is all I can say, but it's like, I don't get it. I don't understand how they're going to no. survive this, but it's going to create like an even messier situation where some of them don't end up getting in because of that stress. Whereas you have Reese McClenahan, who is going to have a better mindset going in because he's going to have podium training. He's going to be more rested. He lives basically in the same time zone, an hour maybe difference. And so it's kind of like, for him, this is just like another World Cup or something, you know, a quick fight away. But yeah, it's going to be Yeah. Wild. And I think, I think Reese is going to have um, sort of fire in his belly after the Paris World Cup. Like, there was yeah. quite some controversy between the historic cleanliness of Reese's performances versus yeah. but I will say he wasn't like at his best in Paris like and you could see that in his face like he was his hips right. are usually so extended and they weren't and so it's just little things like that where it's like if he just like fixes a few skills he's he wasn't that far back from Max but also like they do overscore Max a lot and so I think it's yeah, yeah. I think you know typically when you have maybe foot form problems on every single skill. Like they're not taking, they're not taking the 10th every, yeah. every single time versus every Reese who does typically have near perfect execution. Well, if he fails to yeah. point his toes, like, you know, that they're going to nail him for that, like that simple mistake. So mm -hmm. I think that that will be really yeah. interesting to see what happens at world championships because Max, Max is Max. Like he just yeah. seems to 
always do well and he has crazy hard difficulty. And yes, his form always isn't the cleanest, but he looked much yeah. better in finals at the Paris World Cup than he did in qualifications. And he won. Yeah, he did. And he's, if they're both hitting at their maximum potential, he's three tenths ahead. And that's basically like what their total scores were separated by in Paris. I think it was around three tenths ish. It was close to that. It was like very mm-hmm. much like it came down to, yeah. Yeah. Came down to Reese having a couple of like non perfect skills that were noticeable because they weren't perfect and they usually are. So it's kind of like, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's going to be a big drama again, but. It is hard to make up, especially on an event like that, where the the e scores tend to be so close so often for the top guys. It's like you need to be getting an eight nine e score to make up for three tenths of difficulty because Max is going to get an eight five probably. Right, so, it's that yeah. it's that constant problem that we talk about of the code does not yeah. offer enough room of separation between extraordinary technique yeah. and good or mediocre technique. And, so yeah. Um, Another event that we have that is really a great opportunity for athletes who don't come from top teams is still rings. So I think China Mm -hmm. is probably going to be the favorite to take the still rings title title between uh, Liu Yang and Yo Hao. Like, I just I'm not sure I see anyone beating them. But if there was one person who could beat them, who would it be? Petrinius. (laughs) Yeah, from Greece. And he was like, I don't know, he pulled out of finals at, um, was it Paris or was it Hungary? He pulled out of finals at one of the last two Challenge Cups. And so I'm like, he got like a 15-1, I think, maybe higher. I'm thinking 15-1, but like, then he was just like, okay, bye. <laughs> like, so I don't know what's going on or, yeah. So And he's had some not incredible scores this year. So that's my one thing about him is, yeah, they're – if he's on a 15 one day, then yeah. But if he's on like a 14 nine day, I think there's a couple guys that could even get in ahead of him, which is, and yeah. I do think it'll be one of the Chinese I think still rings yeah. is such an interesting event. It, it's an event that if you're like getting intro into men's gymnastics and like you want to get to know faces, look at still rings because it's the exact yeah. same guys every single time in the final and their order just changes a little bit. Honestly, it comes down to like who sticks the dismount. So yeah, a mm-hmm. couple other people. They all look exactly <laughs> the same every single person they compete. It's like, okay, cool, you're gonna get an eight seven for this. We know it all by heart. Unless you take a step on your dismount, and then you're gonna get an eight five or an eight four. <laughs> so it's like that's literally yeah. ring. <laughs> so like a couple so, other guys you could yeah. probably expect to see in the final are Svan Doftian from Armenia. Like he's typically yeah. in there. Nikita Simonov has had an incredible year. Had an from Azerbaijan, year, yeah. um, Courtney Tulloch from Great Britain. So these are a couple of the guys that you'll see. And like, it's, it's honestly really hard to preview rings because it really just, just comes down to who sticks the dismount because they really are so good on the apparatus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me about vault. So, okay. So for the vault final, we haven't seen in any vault competition so far this year uh, two guy or any guy that has two 6.0 difficulty vaults. The max we've seen is someone with a six and a five six, which we've seen some double sixes in the past. Asher Hong is one of them. It's rare, but like it happens. Japan sometimes has some. Um, but yeah, so I think this year um, it's going to be the 6.0 and 5.6 guys, which there's like five of them. Um, and then like the five six five six guys and then someone like Arthur Dovtown who's I think he's still at five two five two but he's so perfect and gonna get he's at five six five, five six, six five two yeah he's at five six five six I don't know why I'm he's five six five six five. yeah um, Dragulescu and okay, good. is it a cause double his or hand, no I think he does a handspring brandy for his second ball Oh, because he's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah. He, okay, he's the one who that benefited was, from yeah. the change of the code of points because he does the two That's right. handspring yes, entries. Yeah, spring entry. Yeah, you're right. He's five six five six, but he's also like, I mean, he's reigning world champion. 
He's capable of 9.5 plus almost every time he hits. I want to see him get like a 9.8 one day because like there's sometimes where I'm like, he's underscored because he's so, so good. Yeah. perfect and no one comes close to doing what he does. And then like someone else will go up and get a 9.3 for a vastly less, less good vault. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's obviously my favorite. If you can't tell by the way that I'm hyping him, but um, he's 5.6, five, 5.6. Six, five, six. Um, the guys with the higher difficulty are Adema Seal, who makes every final and then crashes at least one ball so, in the final. So and then, sad. <laughs> every single time. <laughs> um, Courtney Tullock yeah, is I another think, one. Um, I think Jake both Darnley. Courtney and Jake missed the final last year, right? Because they crashed. Yeah. And- Courtney did, I think. And- yeah. I, d- I can't remember Jake in the final, but I don't remember <laughs> anything, so... I need like results in front of my face at all times. <laughs> but I do remember weird things, so I don't know. But yeah, I think you're right. I think Yeah, I and I think yeah. Asher Hong may do two vaults. He has a second vault. Um Okay. Yeah, he hasn't done I have this asked year the yet. question Germany? Uh, Germany DTB Cup, yeah. But yeah, okay. I I suspect if he does do a second vault, I think he'll probably only do the two and a half instead of the three and a half. Yeah, that makes a yeah. lot of sense. I can't say for like for certain. I don't have any like insider information, yeah. but I have heard that he is considering doing two vaults. And because we just haven't okay. seen the Yana Kerr in a long time, I yeah. think that, yeah. Could get interesting. <laughs> um, the number one who's trying to qualify for the Olympics in this spot would be Shek Wei Hong from Hong Kong. And he's like, I think a lot of the guys are team guys, aside from Dap Tian. I will say he's Shek Wei Hong is the number two guy, but he has higher difficulty by four tenths. So when you look at the combined totals, so he's also a hit or miss guy. And so it's kind of like Dap Tian, I think, has it, but then he's kind of also there to, to win on difficulty if he's hitting. Um, but I do think Davtian's e scores are so high that if he hits the way he always does, I think he's going to be like the uh, easily decided champion. Yeah, I so. agree. Yeah. Um, I would say the other final I'm probably most excited for is the parallel bar final, and that's because like we don't yeah. know who's going to win, right? It's like in women's gymnastics, yeah. like if Simone's going to be there. Simone, like Simone's winning, right? Like if yeah. Zhou Ching Yuan is at a competition and there are parallel bars there, he is winning by like at least half a point. Yeah. But there are some yeah. really exceptional athletes that are really close. Um, that's yeah. going to make things really, really exciting. Like Lucas Dalzer, I think probably has to be one of the favorites from Germany. Uh, he got silver last year. Like yeah. I said earlier, he's been dealing with some shoulder injuries, but his Makut skill, yep. best in the world. No one does Makuts like Lucas Dalzer. He's the only person who should be allowed to do this skill. And I cannot wait to see what he can yeah. do. Yeah, he is also, we were talking about Germany potentially not qualifying. And I don't know if he would do the all around. He's. I think he did it at... He certainly Trials. can do the all around. I just don't. Can, but I don't if he would, he yeah, would. But if he doesn't do the all around, or if he doesn't get in and through the all around, if Germany doesn't qualify a team, because parallel bars is so heavy handed on all arounders who will qualify as part of a team or on their own, like Eula would be on his own, or um, someone else, like a U.S. guy or whatever. Not that it, I don't think a U.S. guy is going to win, but if like a U.S. guy had the top like he obviously will qualify with the team but like lucas dowser i think this is a way for him to get in even if he doesn't win a medal um because the rest of the rankings will be so full of team or all-around guys that's like the perfect spot for him to get into the olympics if there's no other way yeah and so you just mentioned carlos ulo and carlos really has like four options to qualify to the olympics like he's a great (laughs) I think it'll be all around even on a bad day. Like looking at who would have qualified to the all around last year and how it went down to like 25th place, but I don't think he's going to be lower than 25th unless he really falls on everything multiple right. times. So I really think all around is his way in, but you're right. He has like multiple yeah, paths. I mean, if he it's like if he misses around. all around, he's got floor. If he doesn't do good on floor day one, he's got yeah. two opportunities. Um, day two with fault and parallel bar. So it's like project get yeah. Carlos Yulo to the Olympics. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So I, I see him qualifying all around, which is why I'm leaving that spot open for Dowser. I feel like that's going to be his way in. Um, but yeah, we'll see how Germany looks. Yeah. I think, looks. you know, with the Americans, so often the conversation is around Curran Phillips or Colt Walker, yeah. neither of whom will be competing at this competition unless there's an injury and then yeah. Colt Walker would step in. But the U.S. is still really strong on parallel bars. This is a great P bar scene. It is the absolutely yeah. their best event. And it would not be unheard of for one or two athletes to make it into this final this year. Yeah, I think there, I think four of them maybe are capable of like 14, seven ish mm-hmm. plus maybe. Yeah. Up to, yeah. High 14, maybe low 15s if Yule was like doing the most. But um, yeah, and we've seen Yule get sketchy on this event before, but he he's looked good this year, I think overall, like total picture. Um, and I think it's just going to, yeah, it'll come down to whether he's having like a great day or a not great day. But I think he is like such a good PRS worker when he's. Yeah, and he has a couple different routines that he competes. And it's it's always a question yeah. of like, okay, well, which routine is he going to show up with today? Yeah. Um, like, is he going to do the Foken or is he not going to do the Foken? And it's, you know, yeah, we'll yeah. find out. Um, aside from the athletes yeah. we mentioned, I think like, we would be remiss if we did not talk about Ilya Kofton as yeah. a favorite for gold. And Vernayev too. Yeah. Kofton and Vernayev on this event and Chaperny even. I think this is like the U.S. It's a big event for Ukraine. Um, yeah. Kofton is the favorite. I think he's the highest potential scorer maybe on that team. But it's a really, really good P-bar yeah. team for Ukraine. So then let's move to high bar. Final event. Um, I just need everyone to know that in the notes, Lauren (laughs) wrote, Milad Karibi, please hit. (laughs) I love him on high bar when he is doing his best. But again, he's like kind of, he's been good this year. Did he medal at University Games? I feel like he did. He was 14-8. So I would. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he medaled. Yeah. But he he proved there that when he is doing his best work, he's like an incredible high bar worker. It's just like, don't fall, please, (laughs) please hit. Um, But he's one that I just really want. He's not one that people look at as like a Tin Serbich or like um, Marios Giorgio even now, like in terms of the guys from smaller programs, I would say. He's not one that's really looked at as like a high bar worker. And I think it's mostly because he's an all arounder and known more for floor, but he's great on high bar. And I really, really want him yeah. in the final. Absolutely. <laughs> I. So I'm worried for Tin Servage. Me too. Especially after He has Paris. not had a very consistent year. He is trying his yeah. darndest to upgrade and the upgrades are not upgrading so good. Yeah. He has some skills that he's chucking <laughs> fully. Some look great. Others are just not working when, yeah. Um, I want to say his Kovac. Yeah. Kovac he, skill he, he really sketchy. got hit by the new code. It's not new anymore, but the code for this current cycle, because yeah. you're limited on how many Tkachev style elements that you can do. You can only do a max of three. And if you do three, two of them have to be connected. And so he had to start adding in Kovac style skills, which are the double flipping elements. And they're not his best work. And not that he's yeah. not still an incredible high bar worker. He absolutely is. But yeah, there are some struggles. That's where he when he's catching them, his legs are really far apart and it's close to the bar or ha- far from the bar. It's just not hitting the way all of his other skills hit, which look comparatively incredible. And so I think it's just like he has to get through Kovac elements. And if he doesn't, whether it's a fall or whether it just throws him off because he's not, I feel like he's been directionally off on a few and like that's kind of messed with his rhythm and it's it kind of throws him off the rest of the routine even. And so it's like he's... He's the one, obviously, that won in 2017 when it was like, wait, what happened? And his was like a star of that quad. And this quad, it just has not been the same journey for him. And I think it's it's a bummer because he's so good on high bar and they just completely screwed him over with the code pretty and, much. And, you so. know, there, there are other people who, like, I think in most people's mind, they'll think like, oh, 10 will probably be the favorite for 
the yeah. nominative spot from Hivar, but yeah. there are people ready to challenge. There are a couple from Australia like who have been brought here just yeah. for this event because Australia is not fielding a team yeah. that can actually put up a team score. So they're relying on people like Tyson yeah. Bull to go up and get the highest spot in the high bar final. Um, you've got Marius yeah. Giorgio from Cyprus who has also been strong. And then and Ilya Giorgio too, I think is also able, mm -hmm. I think he's on all around qualifiers. So he's also going to be doing high bars. So, and he looked amazing. They both of the Cyprus, um, the guys from Cyprus looked incredible at World Cup. So, yeah, it's it's deeper than as far as like <laughs> as far as like <laughs> medals go. Would you agree that Hashimoto yeah. probably the favorite for this event? Yeah, I feel like he's the only one that can really go fifteen plus. Like if he's on his best day, fifteen is not hard for him. I would say like it's obviously hard, but for him, it's just kind of like. I feel like he has enough to put like a solid gap between him and any other competitor on this event. Um, he's just that far ahead if he's having a happy mother day. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. thank you so much for joining me today and talking about men's gymnastics. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are <laughs> listening, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any updates for the world championships. Lauren, can you tell people how they can find you and follow your coverage? Yes, on uh, my website is the Gymternet. It's the Gymter, the period, and then net. Um, my Twitter is the Gymter.net, which is the Gymter, D O T N E T. Get it? Gymter.net. Um, I don't do Instagram uh, <laughs> because I'm a foreigner at social media. I don't do YouTube. So those are the best. You can find me. Awesome. Um, also, we, we cannot do this without your support. So I'll be linking uh, both of our PayPal links in down in the show notes. And it would mean so much to have your financial support as it does cost us a lot of money to bring this coverage to you. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this episode or men's gymnastics in general, you can email us at neutraldeductions at gmail.com. We'll see you next time.